Hey guys, I'm glad you joined me this morning. The past few weeks, we have been studying about some of the prophets that God used to bring His messages to people. We've talked about Elijah and learned some of the things he did. We've talked about Elisha, and today we're going to talk about another prophet. Now, so far, all of those prophets have done exactly what God wanted them to do. But the prophet that we're going to learn about today... He didn't follow that pattern. In fact, he pretty much did the opposite of what God asked him to do. I know you've all played Simon Says before. And when Simon Says, touch your toes, you're supposed to touch your toes and not your head. Or if he says, pat your head, he didn't mean rub your belly, did he? You know what's more important than doing what Simon Says? It's doing what God says. We're going to watch the video today, and I want you to listen very carefully in during the video to see if you can learn the name of the prophet who disobeyed God, and then I want you to see how he disobeyed God, and then I want you to put your thinking hat on and see if you can figure out why he disobeyed God, and then we'll be back in a few minutes to talk about it. God told the prophet Jonah, go to the great city of Nineveh. Tell them to stop doing evil things. The people of Nineveh were enemies of God's people. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh, so he got on a boat heading the other way. God sent a terrible storm and the sailors were afraid. They cast lots to figure out who caused this trouble. The lot fell on Jonah. The sailors asked Jonah, Who are you? What are you doing here? Jonah replied, I worship the one true God who made everything. What had Jonah done to make God angry? The sailors did not know what to do, so Jonah told them to throw him into the sea to calm the storm. When they did, the storm stopped. From that moment on, the sailors worshiped the one true God. God sent a big fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah prayed and thanked God for sending the fish to save him. Then the fish vomited Jonah onto dry land. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach my message. So Jonah went. He walked into the city shouting God's message. In 40 days, Nineveh would be destroyed. The people turned from their evil ways. Even the king repented. God decided not to destroy Nineveh. I knew it, Jonah said. You are a gracious God. You show mercy to people. You are slow to anger and you are loving. I knew you would decide not to destroy Nineveh. I am so mad. Is it right for you to be angry? God asked. Jonah left Nineveh and made a shelter where he could still see the city and what God would do. God taught Jonah a lesson. He provided a plant to shade Jonah from the sun. Jonah was glad to have the plant. But the next day, God sent a worm. The worm attacked the plant and the plant died. Then God sent a dry east wind. Jonah was so hot, he almost fainted. I want to die, Jonah said. God asked Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? Yes, Jonah said. It is right, I'm so angry I could die. God said, you cared about the plant, but you did not take care of it or make it grow. It only lasted one day. Nineveh? It's a big city with thousands of people. I created them and care about them. Aren't they and the animals in the city more important than a plant? God called Jonah to go to his enemies and call them to turn away from their sin. But Jonah refused. Instead, he ran away. Later, God sent Jesus to his enemies to call us to repentance. Jesus willingly obeyed. Jesus died on the cross to rescue us from sin. 
Well, who was the prophet that disobeyed God? It was Jonah. I know that most of you have heard this story before. God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh and warn the people that God was going to destroy the city in 40 days if they didn't repent. But instead of going to Nineveh, Jonah hopped on a ship that was going in the opposite direction. I bet when he boarded that ship, he had no idea that he was in for such a bumpy ride. And I can almost bet he didn't think he would be thrown overboard and swallowed by a fish. But since that's exactly what happened to him, let's use our imagination for a minute and think about what it must have been like for Jonah while he was in the middle of that fish's belly. What was he thinking? What was he experiencing? Well, I bet it was dark and slimy and stinky. Think about what else might have been in there. Seaweed, dead fish fish. It wasn't like he was soaking in a hot tub, was it? It probably was really a tight, small spot. And I can only imagine that maybe Jonah had to hold his breath sometimes because the water would splash up over his head. I bet that Jonah thought he was going to die there. And he might have, had he not cried out to God and asked for forgiveness. But when he did, God showed mercy and had that fish spit him out. Then God told him to go to Nineveh again, and this time he went. Only he didn't go with a happy heart. He didn't go to Nineveh with really wanting to help those people. He didn't want to give those evil people in Nineveh a chance to be forgiven by God. I don't know about you, but Jonah's attitude kind of surprised me. I mean, Jonah was given a second chance. He was given a chance to repent. Why wouldn't he want others to get the same opportunity to be forgiven that he was given? Why was he so angry that God was willing to forgive those sinners? Well, I think Jonah has the same problem that we have sometimes. Sometimes we think because we know God, that we're better than other people, but we are not. God created all people and he loves all people and all people are important to him. He wanted Jonah to care about those people and he wants us to care about those people more than anything. You know, in the story, Jonah got so angry because the plant died. People are more important than plants. God wanted Jonah to care more about the people than the plant. And he wants us to care more about people than anything else. You know, the story of Jonah teaches us so much. It teaches us that we all need God's mercy because only God is good and we all need forgiveness. And it teaches us that we should give mercy to all people just like God gives mercy to us. And it tells us how important it is that we obey God, not to avoid getting in trouble by God, but because He loves us and He wants what's best for us and because we love Him. That's what I want us to remember this week. And I want us to work really hard at remembering that God loves everybody, that everyone needs forgiveness and everyone needs God. Then, Just like in the story, we see how important it is that we obey God. I want you to make a decision this week to obey God no matter what. Just like that game Simon says, we do what Simon wants us to do. I want us to get up every morning saying, what does God want me to do? When you make a decision to go somewhere or do something or whatever you do, Ask yourself, what would Jesus say about me doing this? Would it be what he wants me to do? And if it's not, let's just make the decision not to do it. Let's remember that we obey God because he loves us and we love him. Let's pray before we stop today. Dear God, we love you so much. 
Please help us to love others and to remember that we are no better than they are, that our sins need to be forgiven just like everyone else's, and that you are willing to forgive us because of Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.